Welcome to the Century House. The Century House was built in 1893. It was acquired by the village of Addison for the Addison Historical Museum complex in 1993, hence giving it its name. The home was built by the Western Lutheran School District. Records in the archives of St. Paul's Evangelical Lutheran Church state that the home was built with three rooms downstairs and three bedrooms upstairs. There were five acres of land with a fenced-in pasture, a barn shed for his cow, a chicken coop for his chickens, and ample room for a large vegetable garden. The home was for male school teachers and their families. The Century House is the third home that was built by the Western Lutheran School District to house their school teachers. After the village acquired it in 1993, they put the Addison Historical Society in charge of the restoration. The Historical Society raised funds from different civic groups and individuals to restore the interiors and to furnish the rooms. We are now in the foyer or front entry hall of the Century House. The Century House is a unique historic house because it depicts the lifestyle of a middle-class Addison family living in the late 19th to early 20th century. In the front entry hall, you can see the umbrella cane stand, which was important when greeting your guests to the home. This is the living room of the Century House. And I use that name on purpose. In the minutes of the church, this room is always referred to as the living room and not the parlor. When the house was completed in 1893, the room was heated by a coal stove such as this. There would have been a chimney connecting the stove to the chimney that is behind the wall so that you could funnel the smoke from the stove out of the house. In 1917, a hot water radiator system was added to the house. We still use the hot water radiator system to heat the house today. Although electricity came to Addison in the mid-teens, the Century House was not electrified until 1927. Prior to that, there was use of candles and oil lamps to light the home. Music was a very favorite pastime for people in the 19th century. But for the school teacher, it was another source of income. He could make extra money by having music lessons inside the home. The furnishings in the parlor are not original to the home, but are from other Addison homes of the same general time period. We interpret the Century House from its building in 1893 to 1929 when the front porch was fully enclosed. Among the amusements that were popular starting around the turn of the 20th century is this pit card game. It was put out by Parker Brothers in 1904. Our edition here is circa 1919. It is a fast-paced card game that simulates open outcry bidding that was inspired by the Chicago Board of Trade, called the Pit, and the U.S. Corn Exchange. The object of the game was to collect all nine cards of a specific commodity to accumulate points by openly trading with other players. Originally, the Century House ended here. I am standing at what used to be the back door. The second teacher to live in the house, Teacher Cock, had a bigger family. So the church added on an addition, which we'll see a little bit later. Originally, the dining room was the kitchen. When this was the kitchen, we believe that the stove would have been located in this corner of the room. This way, the wood or coal burning stove could be easily vented into the chimney and out through the roof.
This doorway originally led to steps down to the cellar. After 1917, it was changed into a closet. After 1917, when this became the dining room, this room would have been used for all the major meals for the family. Also, the mother of the fat house would put on display some of her fine pieces of china and glassware. Originally, the study was the master bedroom. After 1917, this was transitioned into a study. The roll top desk, clock, portrait, and frame certificates all come from the Strauschild home, which is located at 237 East Lake Street. The items were recently donated to the museum from a descendant of the family. Charles F. Strauschild was village trustee and village clerk of Addison from 1887 to 1888. His great-granddaughter, Marilyn Powells, lived in the house until 2022. We are now coming into the 1917 edition kitchen. This is where all the family's cooking and laundry was done. Back before the days of running water, you had to be close to your water source, which was a pump outside your door. You had to bring all your water into the kitchen. Laundry was usually done on Mondays. It involved either putting the laundry into a um, tin such as this with a scrub board, or if you were fortunate, your husband would have bought you a new fashioned washing machine to make your life a little bit easier. Once you were done washing, you'd have to wring out all of the items to get the extra moisture out and then put them outside on the line to dry. It usually took one whole day to complete. But you weren't done because the next day on Tuesday was ironing day. And again, you needed to use your stove because your irons would have been heated on the stove and you'd always want a hot iron available so you made sure you were heating more than one at a time. The kitchen was also the site of the weekly bath, again, because of its proximity to the water source. A large tub would be brought into the kitchen, the water would be heated on the stove, and then baths would be taken in order from the father, the mother, the eldest child down to the youngest child. If you've ever heard the expression, don't throw out the baby with the bath water, it comes from this weekly ritual. Most baths would have been taken on Saturday evening. You wanted to make sure that on Sunday morning you were at your personal best. You'll notice this kitchen does not have any wall kitchen cabinets. That's because at this period of time, people used furniture to store their supplies instead of cabinets. Here we have a Hoosier cabinet, and inside you would store your various kitchen implements that you would need to use. This piece of furniture is called a pie safe, not just for protecting pies, but other implements that you would use on a daily basis. By just unlatching here, you unveil a series of shelves which could store many items. This is an example of an old ice box. Back before refrigerators, an ice man would deliver ice to your home on a weekly basis. You would place a card in your window to tell him how many pounds of ice you would like delivered. Then you would take one cube of that ice, and I don't mean like our cubes today, but a larger cube, and place it in this compartment in the ice box. This would cool off the other compartment so that you could store your perishables. Unfortunately, ice melts, so you needed a drip pan to collect the water 
as it ran off the cube. This was often the job of children in the household to empty the drip pan. Here is an example of an early wall telephone. Back in the old days, you would pick up the receiver and you would actually talk to a person called an operator. They were at a location where they physically had to plug in or connect you to the party that you wanted to call. Sometimes when you picked up the receiver, you would hear other people talking. This is because you had a party line and shared it with your neighbors. In the 1920s, improvements to the Addison Water Works system made having an indoor sink possible. In 1929, the Century House got its first sanitary station, or what we would call a bathroom, installed. In what was formerly an exterior porch, the area was enclosed, and a sink and a claw foot tub and toilet were installed. Prior to this, the family would have used a outhouse or privy in the backyard of the property and chamber pots upstairs. The doorway here leads to the new exit created when the addition was put onto the house in 1917. It also leads to new stairs to the expanded basement. We are now coming up the original stairwell of the Century House. Please note the narrow width of the treads of the stair. This is the master bedroom of the Century House, but it had more functions than just as a bedroom. It was also the bedroom of the newborn infant who still relied on his mother for his food. It is also served as their bathroom. The room also served as the mother's sewing room, as she was responsible for sewing the family's clothes. These two maple dressers were recently donated to the museum. They belonged to Lillian Cock, the daughter of the second school teacher to live in the Century House. They were sold to the family by the Fair Department Store in downtown Chicago. The department store catered to middle-class families. Behind this wooden door is a closet and this closet dates to the construction of the Century House. This is one of the children's rooms. This is not a bedroom for a single child. This would have been shared by multiple children. Here we have an example of a spool bed from the period. As in with the master bedroom, this room also has its own washstand and grooming station. The desk on display is on loan from St. Paul's Evangelical Lutheran Church. It was used in one of the West District Lutheran schools here in Addison during the 19th century. For storage, this room also had its own closet and at the foot of the bed, its own wooden trunk. We have this room set up as a nursery but it would have been the bedroom of multiple children. Here we have a child in a metal crib, which was considered a sanitary bed at that particular time. Children played with similar toys back in the 19th century, but they were made out of wood, metal, and glass, rather than the plastic that you see today. So this is an example of a late 19th, early 20th century walker, which was used to train the infant to take his first steps. This doorway leads to a newly created attic space after the 1917 addition. You might have been noticing the woodwork in the Century House. The Historical Society had to strip all of the door surrounds and baseboards as they had been painted in the 1960s white. 
This Victorian era dollhouse was uh, produced by SW Craft Company in the 1970s. The company was based here in Addison. The Century House was owned by the church until 1981. It was the home to four school teachers and the school custodian before it was sold to a private family in 1981.